Okay, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to review the whole idea that one mole of any substance is equal to Avogadro's number. These have different labels though. We see an atom, we see a molecule, we see a formula unit. So once again, you've seen this slide before. Who can tell me why one is a formula unit as opposed to a molecule and an atom? Brittany, why is one a formula unit? It is ionically bonded. Excellent. Why would one be labeled a molecule? One would be labeled a molecule because why? What, Ethan? It is covalently bonded and it's just a plain atom cane when it is a single element. <clears throat> Excellent. Just a review. So, it doesn't matter. One mole is equal to Avogadro's particle of elements, Avogadro's number. <clears throat> now, I told you that there were certain problems that you could not do on that worksheet yet. I saw a couple people tried them out. I don't know whether, I didn't look to see whether they were correct or not, but they tried them out. We're going to go over this. So go ahead and copy this down into your notes and we're going to work this problem. The question states, how many atoms of silver are in 3.19 moles of silver oxide? Now, the problem here is that I am given silver oxide, but I am asked to find atoms of silver, correct? That's why I told you, you need to look every time of what they give you and what they ask you to find. What they give you and what they ask you to find. If I look at my flux capacitor here, I have right now, I was given mole of silver oxide, right? If I am going to representative particles, I'm following this green line right here. And when I convert that, I am converting that to formula units of silver oxide. I am not converting to atoms of silver, am I? So this is a two-step problem. After I convert to formula units of silver oxide, I have to then convert to atoms of silver. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. But the key point is, I can't go from moles of silver oxide straight to atoms of silver oxide using Avogadro's number. That's not apples to apples. That's apples to oranges. They're different things. Okay? We've got to go apples to apples first, and then I can convert it to atoms. So, what I'm going to do is trying to get this off of my board. Maybe. Come on. Hey, that works. Thank you. Darn technology, huh? 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 3.19 moles of silver oxide, and I'm going to use Avogadro's number to convert that into formula units of silver oxide. So I know that one mole of Ag2O has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of Ag2O. So what I'm going to do is I get my moles of Ag2O to cancel. So I'm going to convert this to formula units. This is nothing different than what we were doing last week. And I'm going to write my answer down here, folks. So my answer, I'm going to bring all the way over here because I got another step I'm going to do. So I have my answer being 1.9210 one eight times ten to the twenty fourth formula unit a g two o would we agree on that i'm not doing it yet okay question is what about sig figs i'm not going to sig fig it yet i'm going to sig fig it at the end So I don't sig fig this problem till the end. Now, now here is my final point that I have to do. I need to look at my silver oxide. I am asked to determine how many atoms of silver there are. Well, I have this many formula units of silver. Well, if I look at one formula unit of Ag2O, how many atoms of Ag are there? Two, right? So, in order to do that, I multiply that number by two. So when I take that answer and I multiply it by two, I get 3.9210. Times 10 to the 24th atoms of silver. So it's not a terribly challenging step that we've just added, but if you don't identify it from the original problem, then you're going to complete it wrong. Okay, so it's not an incredibly challenging step, just so we identify that particular step. We okay with that one? Do we understand the sig figging at the end? Okay, sig figging at the end. Now, the second one. Go ahead and get this one in your notes, and then we'll work it. Okay. I look at this, and I say, I have atoms of hydrogen. How many atoms of hydrogen are in 0 0.70 moles of phosphoric acid? I start out with my amount given, and I look. I have phosphoric acid given to me, 
and I want atoms of hydrogen. So I can see that I have a formula unit, okay? A formula unit given to me, the phosphoric acid. So I need to do this in a two-step process also. So 0 0.70 mole of phosphoric acid, and I'm going to convert that using Avogadro's number. Once again, I know that one mole of H3PO4 has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd My moles will cancel. Once again, I'm going to bring my answer all the way over here. When I do my calculation, and I get 4.2154 times 10 to the 23rd. Formula units of phosphoric acid. Now here's the new step. What goes on top of my new step here? What goes on top? Three what? Three atoms of hydrogen. One formula unit of H3PO4. So, I'm taking my value. I am multiplying it simply by 3. And I get, and I only have two sig figs on this one, correct? 1 1.3 times 10 to the 24th and my labels that cancels so here's my label it's going to be atoms of hydrogen circle my answer so Mr. Braun can find it when he's grading it Now, we're going to get a bell here, which we just got. So what you need to do is go ahead and take a break. I'm going to have a new problem up on the board that I would like you to work on your own when you get back, and then we will go over it. So the new problem on the board right here, go ahead and get that into your notes and work the problem, and then I will work it. Okay, let's go back to our problem here, people. Let's go back to the problem. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my blueprint. And then you can work it on your own. I think you'll be able to once we see the blueprint. It says, how many moles of aluminum sulfate are there if 3.28 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen are present? So we got this whole glob of aluminum sulfate, and we know how many oxygens are there. So we're trying to determine how many moles of aluminum sulfite, or sulfate, excuse me, would be there. So when I come back and look, I say, I have given to me atoms of oxygen. Can I go straight from atoms of oxygen to moles of aluminum sulfate? Is that a single step? No. So I need to have something happen in between. Now, when I come to my flux capacitor, I'm at atoms of oxygen, right? So I've got to go from atoms of oxygen to representative particles, and then I can go to moles. So this is a 
two-step process. Now, do you think you can work it or do you want me to work it? I'll just go ahead and work it. You're going to get practice of this anyway. Okay, I'll just go ahead and work this. So, here we go. I'm going to start out with 3.28 times 10 to the 24 atoms of oxygen. Now, this step here, what do I want to cancel? I want atoms of oxygen to cancel. So, I am going to look and say, okay, first of all, what is aluminum sulfate? Al2SO4 Three. So how many oxygens do I have in one formula unit of that? Twelve. So that's going to go on the bottom. Twelve atoms of oxygen in one formula unit of aluminum sulfate. Now, I'm going to take that value and divide it out. 3.28 times 10 to the 24th divided by 12 is going to get me 2.7333 repeating times 10 to the... 23rd, and what's my label going to be? What's my label going to be? Formula units of aluminum sulfate. Now, can I go from this? Can I now go from this to moles? Yeah, I can. So I know that I want on my bottom to, ca to cancel out 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of aluminum sulfate. That is equal to one mole of aluminum sulfate. Do my math, so I take the 2.7333 repeating times 10 to the 23rd, divide that by Avogadro's number, and I come up with, I need to see how many sig figs, three sig figs I need, so I have zero point four, five, four, I get a cancel, I get a cancel, what's my label? Moles, aluminum sulfate. So that was working it a little bit different, but it's still the same two-step problem. Well, you're going to do some problems like this because you're going to finish. Did I, did I do it wrong? Zero point four five four. Right, and then I rounded three sig figs to 0 0.454. Okay, you'd agree with me? At the end, at the very end. Question is, people, the question is, listen up. I thought you weren't supposed to round the sig figs 
Don't round your sig figs until the very end. Keep all those big numbers in your calculator. Round it at the end. Okay?